Uh, rare drone strikes hitting residential buildings in Moscow scene, uh, causing minor damage. Uh, minor, though, you see those huge plumes of smoke. It did force evacuations. Kremlin officials calling it a terrorist attack, and they say uh, they shot down five of the drones and jammed the signals of three others. This as Russia has stepped up its airstrikes against Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv. Three people, including two children, reportedly killed in an air attack overnight. Now the White House approving another $300 million in new military aid for Ukraine. Joining us right now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby. Thank you so much for being with us. You bet. Happy to be here. You know, I think that it, it's interesting. The tone has shifted uh, quite significantly in terms of whether Americans have the appetite to send more aid to Ukraine for this war that doesn't have an end in sight. Uh, what exactly will this new aid package do? This package that we announced yesterday is very much in keeping with the sorts of aid packages, uh, assistance packages you've seen us give in the last couple of months. So it's a lot of armor and artillery ammunition, uh, more uh, interceptor missiles for the Patriot systems, more air defense systems uh, in general, and of course, uh, uh, obstacle clearing equipment and uh, an anti-mine equipment to help them, uh, the, the Ukrainians, as they get ready to try to burst through Russian defensive lines. So if you just look at the package in general, you'll see that it's very consistent with what we've been providing over the last several months. But but clearly, uh, Russia's not going to give up. Putin's not going to stand down. If, if anything, he's got an ego. Uh, of course, you know that better than anybody. But is Ukraine prepared for this counteroffensive? We believe they are. Uh, we have done an enormous amount uh, of work uh, with our allies and partners to make sure that Ukrainian defense needs for their counteroffensive have been met. Uh, everything they've asked for that we, we have helped provide ourselves or work with allies and partners to do that, not to mention uh, giving them training on some of these advanced systems so that they know how to use them in the field. They know how to maintain them and fix them and, uh, and keep a supply chain going to keep them, uh, you know, keep them running. So there's been an awful lot of effort uh, in the last six, eight months to make sure that Ukraine's ready. Now, when they conduct this counteroffensive and where and how, that's going to be up for President Zelensky to decide. Uh, but we're confident that we've done everything we can to, to get them as ready as possible. I know that we have trained uh, some of Ukraine's troops uh, for this fight in terms of using the technology that we're giving them. But how do Americans have the certainty, have the confidence that we're not just throwing money at this problem? I think uh, the American people understand what's at stake here. I mean, look, we all remember our own history. We didn't win our independence without foreign help. Uh, and Ukraine is fighting for their independence right now. And I think a lot of Americans understand that if Mr. Putin wins, if we just walk away and let him take Ukraine, what's next? And if you think the cost is high now in terms of what we provided to Ukraine, and yes, we provided an awful lot, think about how exorbitantly higher that cost would be, not just in treasure, but in our blood. If, in fact, Mr. Putin gets Ukraine and then decides uh, to, to move further west uh, and to attack other countries, NATO countries, which we are obliged to defend. So I think the American people understand what's at stake here. We, we have to make sure that Ukraine can defend itself. We have to make sure that their territorial integrity is respected, that their sovereignty stays intact, and that Mr. Putin cannot take Ukraine off the map the way he wants to. What in, ter what in terms of, of sy systemic changes in Ukraine has America been invested in? We had a gentleman who was a former uh, U.S. Army general, <clears throat> and he was talking about how there are no medics. And so he's using fundraising efforts to provide more medics on the ground in Ukraine because they simply did not have the infrastructure for that. So in addition to this military assistance, is America doing anything to help them from that side? We absolutely are, and we have been since 2014. I mean, if you look at the, the Ukrainian army that the, the Russian military faced back in 2014, it is not the same army uh, that they're facing right now. And of course, the, the proof of that is bearing out on the battlefield and how the Ukrainians have now clawed back more than half of the territory that the Russians took uh, back in uh, February 22. But it's also bearing out in the fact, in the way the Ukrainians are fighting. They are much more westernized, more NATO-aligned force now than they ever were before in terms of just the equipment that they have. Uh, they're, they're flying, still flying Soviet aircraft, but pretty soon they're going to be getting fourth-generation aircraft from, uh, from the United States and from, uh, and from our allies. Uh, so they're, they're gradually becoming a more westernized, more modern uh, military. Uh, and obviously, if they have shortages, such as medics or anything like that. I mean, we'll, we'll continue to work with them to, uh, to improve their capabilities. We know that whenever this war ends, however it ends, uh, 
Ukraine's going to be a different country in many ways, and their military is going to be an entirely different military. And we're already starting to think about what those long-term defense needs might be. That's where the F-16s come in. Uh, what, what do they need post-war to make sure that they can continue to defend themselves? Because they're no, no matter where the lines are drawn, right. they're still going to have a long border with Russia. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.